Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Sheikh Professor Alaji Dr. Yaeje Jame, for all his support in ensuring that this project is seen through to this very important historic occasion of signing this contract. Edward T. Samu is the Deputy Inspector General of Police. On behalf of the Inspector General of Police, I think this is a clear demonstration for the government to consider seeing deem fit to elevate, to make the police force a modern police force by providing quotas and residence for the police officers. As the Honorable Minister rightly said, government has looked into it to make sure that police are well equipped, well housed, so that at any time given point, they are asked to do certain duties they will be able to deliver as expected. The project will certainly provide critically needed infrastructure if facing the housing problems faced by security personnel. In the minister's words, if everyone deserves proper sheltering, what about the very custodians of national peace and security? Ibrahim Ajata, GRTS. The U.S. Ambassador to the Gambia Thursday visited the veterinary unit of the Ministry of Agriculture. The top party would include the Minister of Agriculture, FAO country representative, as well as senior agricultural officials, give the American diplomat an insight into the facility. Our Abdullah Baji went along and he reports the Agriculture Minister used the opportunity to reveal the availability of vaccines for the CBPP outbreak. The U.S. Ambassador to the Gambia today visited the veterinary unit of the Ministry of Agriculture. The visit which also included the Minister of Agriculture, FAO resident representative, as well as other senior officials of the ministry, saw the delegation have a complete tour of the laboratory unit of the facility. The visit which accorded the ambassador who has special interest in agriculture, the opportunity to see the facility with support from personnel of the ministry. Speaking to GRTS shortly after the tour, Director of Animal Health and Production, Dr. Keba Dafe, hailed the ambassador for taking time to visit the facility. He also dilated on the importance of training and said that they have recently benefited from a training on transboundary infections. A lot of important trainings have taken place in this country. One important training I would like to highlight is the training on transboundary animal diseases, the recognition of diseases such as CBPP. And we think that that training has been instrumental in the detection of CBPP in the Gambia. So our relationship with the U.S. is very important to us as a department. The facility is functional but constrained by lack of adequate equipment, which makes work difficult, especially when it comes to conducting tests. The director further said that the essence of the visit is to also see how the U.S. could help in providing his department some of their required equipments. The laboratories are collaborating very strongly with USAID and really it is uh, within such frameworks that we think it can happen. For us, even as we speak now, we've benefited from uh, US assistance. You see most of the time when international laboratory trainings take place in the Gambia, they leave behind all the regions and the kits that are used. In fact, most of those kits are what we have in our lab, given to us by the USAID and the USDA, AFIS, United States uh, uh, Department of Agriculture, Plant and Animal Health Infection Services. So the collaboration has been going on, but we want to strengthen it and take it to a new level, which will probably include looking at the infrastructure and seeing how to train the personnel and at a higher level. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Solomon Owens, was quick to state that parts of the structure was built with support from the United States. The visit he cited is an avenue to seek for support from the U.S. Embassy as well as reviving the veterinary services of the Ministry of Agriculture. They supported two major projects here in the 80s, um, asking them to come and look at what we have and to seek their support, solicit their support, I think is one of the reasons we are, we are here. But at the same time, again, you know, we are reviving the veterinary services and um, to do that successfully, we need to rehabilitate the laboratories, the clinics, the training centers, and the overall infrastructure, not only in Aboko here, but in every region of the country. Responding to what the government is doing in its quest to stop the spread of the GBPP epidemic, which is an infection affecting cattle in the country, the Honorable Minister explained that vaccinations have already been secured and every herd of cattle in the Gambia will be vaccinated. The situation, he concluded, is under control. Abdullah Baji, GRTS News. 
Well, we're going to take a very short break now, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the breakthrough by French troops in Mali, the fate of 11 million leg illegal immigrants in the U.S., plus the fallout from the recent anti mosi riots in Egypt. <laughs> It is culture beyond imagination, rich and diverse, the pride of our identity. Join Banna Jeju on these breathtaking and captivating moments as he crisscrosses the length and breadth of the Gambia in search of culture. Coming soon on GRTS in 2013. Soon you your son, you come home. Welcome back to GRTS News. The French Defense Minister has described his country's military intervention in Mali as a success. This after they have taken over the rebel stronghold of Kidal. And a severe train coalition in South Africa has left more than 200 people, injured most of them school children. We hear details of these and other stories in the CFI News Roundup. French Minister of Defense Jean-Yves Le Drian confirmed that French forces are now in the town Kidal in northern Mali, which is an Islamist rebel stronghold. Le Drian called the French military intervention a success. African troops are now expected to join the French military to secure Kidal. Mali's president has begun planning for the country after the war. He declared that the only group with whom he would negotiate is the MNLA, and that on the condition that they give up all claims to territory. British Prime Minister David Cameron visited Algeria on Wednesday. He is the first head of a British government to visit the country in over 50 years. Cameron's visit was to strengthen security cooperation between the two countries to help fight terrorism in the region. The visit comes two weeks after Islamic militants raided the Inaminis oil facility. Cameron then made a surprise trip to Libya. The Libyan visit comes just days after Britain warned of threats to its embassy in Tripoli and to Westerners in the city Benghazi. Two trains collided in Pretoria, South Africa on Thursday. The accident occurred at 7 in the morning during rush hour. Over 200 people were injured in the accident. Many of the wounded were children who were on their way to school. The collision occurred when a commuter train crashed into a stationary locomotive on the same track. Authorities believe that the theft of cables linked to the signaling system caused the accident. The removal of the cables forced drivers to switch to manual operations, which require a control center to tell drivers if a section of track is clear or not. A proposed reform by the United States government is set to legalize the status of over 11 million illegal immigrants. The new development unveiled by, the, by a bipartisan committee was held by many, especially Hispanics, who now form a significant chunk of the U.S. electorate details in this report. More than 11 million immigrants in the United States are living there illegally. Most come from Mexico and Central America. If a proposed plan of reform goes through, they may soon be allowed to stay. It would be a good thing. This way we won't have to fight for our papers. We can live better and not as illegal aliens. On Monday, a bipartisan committee of four Democrat and four Republican senators unveiled a plan to reform immigration laws to allow illegal immigrants to apply for residency. We have been too content for too long to allow individuals to mow our lawn, serve our food, clean our homes, and even watch our children while not affording them any of the benefits that make our country so great. However, the group said the application for residency was contingent on tighter border security. The Obama administration has already increased the number of border guards to 21,000 to patrol the 3,000 kilometer border between the U.S. and Mexico. A day after the senators laid out their plan, supporters of the reforms demonstrated outside a church in Los Angeles, where President Obama was presenting his own plan. It differs from the senators on the question of security. The president said it would be unfair to make illegal immigrants wait until the border was entirely secure before granting them the right to apply for citizenship, a wait that might take a lifetime. Hispanic voters are confident that the reforms will go through. We feel that in this time, it's different because the Republicans and even the Democrats and others realize that the Latinos 